Hey guys, as you know, I am not a professional podcaster or bike reviewer or content creator, none of that. I just uh, think about videos that I'd like to share, things that might help people make decisions about what bikes to buy or what equipment to run. I've been mountain biking since 1993 or so and gone through all kind of different equipment changes, seen everything evolve over the past 30 years. And uh, this specialized Epic, it's the Epic 8. It's not the Evo, it's the Epic 8. It's one of the best bikes I've ever had. It's uh, very well done. I've used it recently to do some some all-out efforts on uh, our local trails here and just uh, really been pleased with everything about it. I wanted to share with you my experience with the bike. I've got about uh, 150 miles on it so far. All those miles are pretty much rocky, technical single track here in Huntsville, Alabama. Just going from the front of the bike to the rear, um, this bike has a steering stop on it, which I really like. It's my first bike to ever have a steering stop. I've been really uh, happy with that. I went, I went on um, and put a one centimeter longer stem on this bike to match the reach on my prior bike. The bike I was riding before is a Scott Spark. It's like a 2021 model. So this geometry is quite a bit more progressive than what I had. This has the new um, SRAM gear shift and it really was bothering my thumb because just the ergonomics of it, I can never really get the ergonomics right and it ended up changing out the two buttons to this rocker and I've been a lot happier with the ergonomics on this rocker. I was getting a lot of like fatigue in this tendon here on my thumb. This bike has the three position lockout and I've been using it quite a bit and really where I ride, I'm almost always on the open and occasionally we'll go to the pedal mode. This bike weighed in at like 24 pounds, 14 ounces with this uh, in-frame mount not attached and the um, the bag on the inside not included. And this setup that I'm running was like a pound and a half with my Topeak uh, repair kit here, inflator and my um, plugs. Then I got two CO2s and an inner tube in here with a lever and that was like a pound and a half added to the, to the bike. And without that, the bike was 24 pounds, 14 ounces. Um, I started out running the bottom bracket with the flip chip in the high position and have since gone to the low position and actually like the low position, I think better on the really technical terrain we have here in, in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. But one of the things you have to deal with when you, when you change the flip chip, the whole triangle is tilting towards the rear. So not only are you slackening out the head tube, but you slacken out the seat tube as well. That's going to change the angle of your saddle a little bit, but it's also going to weight, kind of weight the rear end more and make your rear shock more active and your, and your fork a little bit less active. So you might want to, which I had to do, is adjust the air pressures as you, as you change the chip and you change your weight distribution, you have to modify your air pressures to keep the same sag and to keep the same feel of the uh, front rear balance. One thing about this bike that I don't particularly like, from what I've researched online, this shock doesn't have any, um, I guess shocks have bottom out tokens. This one does not. The front also does not, but what I notice is that the front and rear don't really seem balanced. I noticed that on my rear, I blow, I'll blow through the travel completely and I'll feel the a hard bottom out, but I don't feel it on the front. And I can feel the rear end really taking up the full range of travel throughout the ride, but I don't really get that sensation on the front, even though I'm running, I'm running like uh, for my weight, 10 or 15 PSI less than RockShox says. And still, you know, I'm using up all the travel on a, on a ride, but I don't feel that front rear balance that I felt on my Scott. It's a, it's not a, I guess it's not a real problem, but I would like to have a more progressive uh, spring rate on the rear. You can really feel the progression on the front, even without the bottom out token, but I don't feel it on the rear. It feels really linear, the um, spring rate. And I would like to have more of a um, increase as you get towards full travel and, and getting towards a, a bottoming out. Another thing I noticed that I don't particularly like is at the end of a, of a more technical descent, the shock will be significantly um, hot uh, really hot to the touch to the point that I was I would think that something was wrong. I actually talked to a guy here in town that had the same bike and he said he had the same uh, issue with the shock. I, I don't feel any change in the performance as it heats up, but it is it is hot and it's I, I've never felt that before on any other bike. If you have any comments, 
on, on that or anything I've said in relation to this bike, let me know. Um, it has developed a, a creak some, somewhere in the suspension. I noticed like uh, I'm more of a lateral torque like this where you're, I'm pushing into the pedal here, but on either side, I'll hear some kind of cracking and I haven't really diagnosed that. I, I want to take apart all the pivots and re-grease everything just to see if that gets rid of it. I have like the seat post a lot. So this post has uh, air inside of it, like 250 to 350 PSI that you can adjust. There's a valve here. You have to take the saddle off and the clamp off to get to the um, Schrader valve. But you can see it has a significant amount of suspension travel once it's not in the fully locked out position. Fully locked out, it's not supposed to move. But when it's depressed, um, you get like an added, added uh, spring to it. Not at the bottom. It doesn't do it at the, all the way at the bottom, though. Um, so I've been happy with the dropper post. And in general, I mean, I'm super happy with the bike. I love the bike compared to anything I've ever had. It's my, definitely my favorite mountain bike. But just some, it's some issues that I've expressed so far. If you have any comments or, or things that you've experienced with this bike, please let me know. I'd like to uh, hear what all your experiences has been. I do uh, like this bottom bracket power meter. I found out the hard way that the battery inside the power meter has to be a lithium AAA battery. I was using an alkaline and an alkaline is gonna drain basically every, every day you'll have to put in a new battery. So you have to buy these lithium AAAs for this cork that's located in the, in the bottom bracket. Another thing I like about the details with this frame it comes stock with uh, frame protection stickers, the clear stickers, which are right here for the uh, water bottle that might hit on the down tube. And there's a big down tube sticker right here. I've never had a bike come stock with that kind of frame protection, which is really nice. Normally I would have to put that on myself. So I appreciate that. There's also some frame protection on the inside of the seat stay for the chain rub. And so those are nice details. Here's a video of that rocker that I bought for the uh, controller. This is the buttons that were on the stock controller. I didn't like these at all, really. I couldn't, I couldn't find a good spot for them. But really been pleased with this one. I can shift with my index finger here if I want to. And then, of course, I got both directions here. So that's been a good thing to add to the bike. So hope that helps anybody make a buying decision if you're looking at getting this bike. Thanks.